Hi everyone. Welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you to develop a game like Flappy Bird using only HTML, CSS and jQuery. Before that, let me show you a demo of the game. This is the game. We have a container and uh, a bird these two balls and a place where the score and speed is displayed and there is one more thing that is the this restart button okay the game goes like this we have to control the bird and fly it through the balls without touching it so that your score will increase and throughout the game the height of the ball will change and the speed increases so now let's see the game over conditions there are four conditions first one the bird touching the top of the container second one bird touching the bottom of the container and uh, there are two more one is hitting the ball two let's see and ball one that's all about the game of conditions and let's have a look at the files we are going to work with we have three files the index.html file the style.css file and the script.js file see i have a minimal setup ready so that we can concentrate more on the script than the html and css part but i'll explain everything because we use css properties to build and run this game so let's start with the index.html file we have here see we have a title and I have included three files which is the style.css file and the script jQuery and the script.js file that we are going to work with okay. now let's see the contents inside the body we have a div with id equal to container that is this div the outer div inside that we have a div with id equal to bird that is this one and we have two divs with ids poll one and poll two which has the same class poll so that will be this and this okay and Remember, all these three divs are inside the container. Okay, so outside the div container, container div, we have another div with id equal to score underscore div, which consists of two p tags where the score is displayed. And at last, we have the button with id restart underscore btn that is the reset button we have here so let's go to the style.css now see we have given style to the body the container the bird the comment class poll and the poll 1 and poll 2 and score diff and the reset button okay so let's see the styles body we have given height and width 100 percent and a margin zero nothing much the container position relative so see you have to remember this because the container's position is relative and the content inside the container which is the bird and the pulse their positions are set to absolute and you have to do this because it's very important Let's go to the container. Okay. Container position relative height 400px or whatever you like. 
with 90% border 2px solid red as we have seen there and background color alice blue I've given alice blue because to that uh, it will look like sky something like sky okay and the margin left of 4% because the width is 90% and the margin left 4% because it, uh, to position it at the center of the screen and I've set overflow to hidden and we'll go to the bird okay its position is absolute as I said earlier and the background URL we are using a PNG file of a bird okay and a height 42 px width 65 px background size contain and background repeat no repeat okay and this top and left properties we're giving to position the bird properly okay so top i've given 20 percent and uh, left 15 percent okay now we have the comment class ball of the balls okay Position is absolute, important, and height 130px, width 50px, background color red, and right 50px. And let's open the file and see. Open with Firefox. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. See, we're not seeing the pods anywhere here. That's because we have given the right minus 50 px because we need it because when the game starts we don't want to see the uh, pulse to be on the screen on the screen okay yes i'll change it to 50 and let's see if it's there or there yeah, it's there if it's minus 50 it will be hidden from the container okay you see the bird here this to position it there i have used this to a top 25 and left 15 okay when the game starts okay. and the pole one pole two pole one we need to be at the top uh, let's change this to 50 px and i'll show you see this this is the pole one i need to uh position it like this at the top of the container that's why i've given top as zero and ball two bottom as zero so that it will be at the bottom of the container okay that's it again okay next we have the score div text align center and font size 40 px it's easy right text align center and uh, font size 40 px Next, we have this restart button. This position is absolute top zero with 100% padding 20px, background color, some color, I don't know how to pronounce it. Color white and font size 35px, border none, concept pointer, and this is very easy, right? Yes. And display set to none. Because when the game starts for the first time, we don't want the reset button to be on the screen. Right, we we are handling those in the script. When the game is over, slide down the reset button, something like that. You'll see it later. Okay. So that's all about the CSS and HTML part. We are done with everything. Now let's go to the script.js file. So this is the script.js file and we have some variables declared here i'll tell you what it is see everything will be inside this document.ready function everything we are going to write will be in this inside this okay so for a clean code i have saved all the objects in separate variables for example i've saved container in container so that in the code i can directly use container instead of dollar hash container okay that's it i will select the bird the ball common class ball one and ball two score speed which is the speed speed span okay reset button and everything and and i've selected something else too i've saved something else too this is a container width 
passing value of the containers width the initial width pole initial position which is the pole css right this pole is the common class because we have pole 1 and pole 2 at the same position every time during the game uh, it's high changes but it will be at the same position okay so pole initial position and this is the pole's initial height which is the passing value of pole.css height and we have the bird left also this which is the bird.css left and we have the speed we have speed here first we are setting the speed of the of the game to or the bird or if you are a programmer you know that the speed is set to the poles you know the bird is not moving actually the poles are moving so the speed is set to initial speed is set to 10 let's command this to to make the code more readable okay so And let's add some more important things like the container height that will be the passing value of containers height function and we have the bird left and let's add bird height also which will be the css not css which will be the height function of the bird okay i think that's all we need if uh, anything is required uh, later in the code we'll add it here okay so everything the entire game is depend on a set interval function so let's declare that so war the game equal to set interval this is a set interval function which runs every 40 millisecond we need it to we need it for the game okay so what are we going to do first let's look at the demo we are going to move the balls that will be our first task so let's see how it's done okay so every 40 millisecond in order to move the balls so every 40 millisecond we will take the pole current position and save it in a variable call for call current position it is the percent value of poll dot css right and to move the to move the polls we should set the polls css right we should increase it every 40 millisecond we should increase it so let's see we're setting the css right property css right will be 
pole current position plus let's say speed which will be 10 px which means every 40 millisecond pole css ride will be increased with a uh, 10 pixels and uh, that's it that's how we move the pole from right to the left let's see yes we have got the pods moving it's moving from right to the left okay. okay now you see the when it passed the container it went out of the container and the body so that's not the required thing the what we want is to bring back the pulse right here again okay let's see how it's done let's comment this okay so now when the pods go out of the container and we have to bring it back so check whether the pods went out of the container how do we do that will have an if condition if pole current position is greater than container width which means if the ball went out of the container what should we do we should bring it back at its first position which means Paul's initial position so let's say we update the pole current position with the initial position see pole current position equal to pole initial position so that whenever the pole went out of the container it will bring back the pods this chord will bring back the pause to its initial position and the chord goes on. Let's see. Okay, the pause are coming from moving from right to left. It went, off the, went out of the container and it came back again. Okay, that's it. Next, what we are going. So what do we do next? We want to change the height of the pods. Okay. So when do we want to change the height? Okay. Every time when it reappears, its height should be changed. Just before it reappears, the height should be changed. Okay. So let's say. So we will write the condition here before setting the pulse current position we'll check we'll you know that the height is dynamic so war new underscore height equal to let's say pass in off math dot random into 100 it's very easy so we'll get uh values like 10 20 30 39 50 60 80 90 okay like that so new height and what we are going to do is we will add and subtract the pulse initial height 
with this new height. Okay, let's see how it's done. See. Change the ball's height. It's done. Ball dot CSS height to sorry it's changing ball once ball underscore one dot CSS height. We want the heights to be different for ball one and ball two. So ball one dot CSS height will be ball initial height plus new height. So if we are add, if we are adding the new height to the ball one, we should subtract that 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 height from ball two because to keep the space between the poles even okay so let's do that poll 2 dot css height will be poll initial height minus new height see we're taking when every time when the uh, when the Paul is out of the container just before its position is reset. Res the height will be changed. Okay, let's see how it's working. Now we have the first pause height here. If we watch the mouse pointer, and now we have it here, and now we have it here so it is changing okay so that's also done now what we are going to do next now let's say we change the speed of the pulse that is the speed of the game now it's only 10 and we are not updating the speed here also let's do that okay so when do we want to change i mean increase the speed it's the same condition as the height is resetted like when it reappears okay so it will be inside this one just after the height is resetted let's say increase speed which is very easy because we have already declared this declare the speed variable speed equal to speed plus one so each time it will be added by one pixel now we want to display the speed also so we've selected the speed span speed underscore span dot text will become speed that's how easy it is so let's see now the speed is 10 initial speed is 10 that's static so the speed is changing now it's 11 and it's 12 you can see the speed change here if you look at the pods carefully yes now the next step is to control the bird. Okay. So let's do it. In order to do that, we should let's say some other declarations. Mm -hmm. Yes war go underscore up equal to false false okay move the board let's come down here and see if sorry, if 
go up equal, equals false. Go down. We have not defined the go down function yet. So let's go and define it after the set interval function. Don't forget that function go down. So what is it going to do? The go down function. It is going to move the bird down. Okay. So how can we do it? To move the bird down, we have to also first. To move the bird down, we have to increase the top, CSS top, so that the bird will come down. Let's do that. Okay. We have the bird CSS top go to pass int. of bird dot css top plus five so we are setting the B css top for the bird and we are increasing it by five so let's see how See the bird CS stop is increasing, that's why it's going down. So now we have to control the bird, right? Using the space bar. So let's go and write the function for it. It will be outside the set interval function document dot on key down function. You need to get the key code so let's save the key in a variable called key key equal to e dot key code that will be 32 because the spacebar key code is 32 so let's check that if key To equal to equals thirty two. Um, that's it. Declare a new no no. Let's we have already declared go up equal to false on the top. Say go up equal to set interval a function which is not defined yet. Say fifty. Okay, so if key equal to equal to 32, which is space, then go up will be updated with the set interval function, which runs every 50 millisecond, and the function will be this up function. So let's go and uh, add the up function here. Up will be same as this word with a small difference would be there so css stop to control the word or to or to make the bird go up we should decrease the height you know we should decrease the top not height we should decrease the top so let's do that pass into the bird the css top minus Five or let's say ten. Okay. See, I pressed the space bar only once and we'll fix those issues later. So now it's going up. Okay. So we just have to check whether go up is false here. And then go up is false make sure go up is false 
then only set interval set the set interval function false and then go up okay there won't be much effect on that so so when should the word come back again on the key up function of the spacebar let's say we have let's copy this function and on key up on key up function of if key code equal to is 32 and 32 what should we do we should clear interval of this go up to bring the bird back to make it go down and we should update the go up function with false as we did the first time so that go up will be false and the go up will come here and check go up equal equal false go down and when the key down again on the key down function it will check key equal to 32 and go up equal to false then go up will fire the up function again let's see yes coming down i'm pressing the space bar okay releasing it yes pressing releasing pressed released that's it so now we are controlling the bird too now what is remaining the game of conditions right so let's do that before i do that there is in order to check the game over conditions we have to check for the collisions of the bird with uh, the the two balls and the container top and bottom there is a code for that to check the collision so let's there's a function for that this is a function we, to which we'll pass two diffs or two whatever okay and it will return true if it's collided or otherwise false let's see where will we write that condition so inside the game the game of course let's say if collision of but comma pole one or collision of but comma pole two We'll do the container stuff later. First, let's before this. No, after this. Save. Okay. So if call collision of bird comma pole one or collision of bird two, pole two and bird, what should happen? You should stop the game. Let's write a function for that. Stop the game. Let's declare it here. Yeah, go up. Function stop underscore the underscore game. Stop the game. Should stop the game. So it should clear this set interval function let's say let's go and have a clear interval function d game let's do that first and now we have we have to display the restart button right let's do that Selected the reset button dot slide down. Okay. 
Let's check whether it's happening or not. Let's try to hit the ball one first ball. Yeah. No. Yeah, I didn't write any function for the restart button. So let's see. Okay. It's working. Now we want to there are two more conditions. Bird hitting the top and bottom of the container. We can't do that with that collision function. We have to write our own condition for that. Let's look at that. Let's see that. So let's turn space or or what we have to do. Like first we'll check whether the bird collides with the top of the container. Which means bird's top is while going up, its top will decrease, right? So when it becomes less than or equal to zero, that's a game over condition. So let's write that. See, bird dot let's pass in this value pass int. Bird dot CSS top is less than or equal to zero. Let's go and check that. Yes, it's working. Now bird hitting the bottom of the container. So in order to do that, like we'll use the bird CSS top. So, if the bird comes down, the CSS top will be increasing, right? So, if its top reaches the height of the container, no, 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 there is something else, right? If the bird's top reaches is greater than, I'll, I'll write that. Or, oh, oh. Pass end of bird dot CSS top is actually we have not declared the bottom with bird dot CSS bottom that's why we have this difficulty in the um, creating this pass end of bird so CSS top is greater than container height minus bird height I hope that's it like bird.css stop we're checking bird.css stop is greater than containers height minus bird height CSS stop is greater than container height is this one minus bird height so that will get this this condition so that's done so all the four game over conditions are done let's try all those top and bottom okay ball two and hold one everything done now we focus something right when we successfully fly the bird through the balls the score should increase so let's do that too so that will be another condition not inside this will come just before that say update the score when the pause pause have pause the bird 
successfully. That's right. Half check that. Let's see. Whole current position is greater than container width minus bird left that's it that's how you see this so you should check the position which is the right is greater than just greater than the container height minus birds left so that's how we'll get this course okay if ball current position is greater than container width minus bird left, we should increase the score. Now we have the score there. Already selected score dot text will be pass end of score dot text which is zero at first plus one let's see uh, it when it is passed yes the score got updated but there is a problem see our condition was like this Paul's current position is greater than container with container with minus bird left score should be updated okay so we have a window from here till here the condition is satisfied when the pause just pass the bird and pass the container that's a, there this window is so much okay let's try to <coughs> fix that okay let's declare a variable here and war score updated equal to false and set it to false so let's check call greater than width just before updating it let if score updated equals false Then update the score and update the score updated variable to true. So let's see that. <coughs> yeah, that's good. But we have forgot something because it's not changing, right? We didn't reset it to false. So when do we reset it? Once this pause, just before the pause reappear, we have we already have the condition for that. Where is it? Here. Just before it reappears, which means before this. Let's say score updated equal to false. Let's go and see one, two, S. We've got it right. Yes, now that's also over. Now, what's remaining is the restart buttons function. Let's go and do that. Okay, function stop the game after that. Restart button dot click function. Nothing much. Location dot reload. That's it. See that? 
reset button will play function, location dot reload. Okay. So that's done, everything is done. But let me show you something. See, the now the game is over. Now let's just press the space bar. Do you see this? The bird is still going up. Which is not a solid problem, but it's not good, right? Let's fix that. Let's go and fix that. So what is firing the condition like the key down function? So we're checking everything or to Something is missing. Let's go and declare war game over equal to false. Okay. So we should check by pressing this. Equal to equal to false. It should be false. So when will we reset the game over variables value to true? Because we know when we have the game. When we are calling the stop the game function when the game is over. So let's write it inside that. Stop the game. Clear of the game. Say game over equal to true. Now let's go and check that. Just now, if I press space bar, nothing happens. So, guys, that's all. Thank you for watching this tutorial and share this tutorial and like it if you like it. Yes, and try to build your own game with new features like uh, moving skies, birds, another like whatever you want. And please, please support this video, share this video with your friends if you like it. And thank you all for watching this. Thank you.